and here come the teams now and there will be a terrific roar as they head out so here we go again as if Tuesday and Wednesday wasn't exhausting enough once more through the championship ringer we spin the word should has little or no meaning at the moment not after a week in which Leicester, Ipswich and Leeds all failed to win the games they should have won not even managing a goal between them so how relevant just a few minutes before kickoff is the fact that 43 points separate these two sides Leicester have barely had time to shower and shave since their last game at Millwall but they must dig deep again in this their 49th game of the season in their change kit again and they face the team all in green lining up at the moment in front of us the flags all round the ground and a mosaic behind the goal as well pieces of uh, green and white paper being held at the Devonport end it is going to be quite a night let's look at the two teams Plymouth's interim manager Neil Chusnip spoke yesterday about the need for fresh legs following their draw with QPR on Tuesday he's made five changes to freshen up the team among them Brendan Galloway and Adam Forshaw come in sadly for Leicester 19 goal Morgan Wicker hasn't been rested he starts so their lineup will be Michael Cooper in goal Julio Plegazello is coming in at the base well probably the right hand side of their back three Dan Scar in the center and then Brendan Galloway maybe on the left maybe on the right we'll have to wait and see four in midfield Mikael Miller one of those recalled alongside Adam Randon, Randall and Adam Forshaw Barley Mumba on the left hand side disappointment for Callum Wright the former Leicester trainee he is only a sub he's replaced tonight by Mustafa Fundu Ryan Hardy number nine but not among the goals in recent times Morgan Whitaker takes the captain's armband from Joe Edwards who is rested to the bench three changes for the Foxes James Justin's pace may be the key at right back in trying to keep Morgan Whitaker quiet Abdul Fatawu comes in having taken a break in midweek against Millwall coming off the bench he should be fully fit back to his best up front Jamie Vardy has never played against Plymouth he'll have to wait a little bit tonight though he's on the sub bench Patson Dacker starts so the Fox is like this Mads Hermanson in goal the back four will be Ricardo Faz Vestergaard and James Justin in midfield Harry Winks Wilfred Ndidi here in Dewsbury Hall and then up front on the right hand side Fadawu, left hand side Steffi Mavadidi and then Patson Dacca will be the striker for Leicester City well they may not be happy that they're playing on Friday night but they'll have to put that to one side and I'm sure they will the professionalism is the highest it can be at the moment and Leicester City know that a win here tonight will be absolutely huge they will kick off kicking from right to left our referee about to get us underway Robert Jones a Premier League referee just one championship match for him and Leicester are underway this huge game five games to the Premier League four wins and a draw and Leicester are back four wins will probably be enough with their goal difference but we are assuming there are no drop points elsewhere and that at the moment seems highly unlikely Plymouth have the ball at the moment in the right back position and it's won by Dakar who just runs it out of play and behind for a goal kick but Leicester early on shouldn't be a problem really but is it later on with the utilisation of substitutes may be a factor here's Dewsbury Hall infield to Dakar they've got a man over there and it was uh, Fatawu who played the ball it's Ndidi I should say who played it out to uh, Fatawu and he 
No, was that a shot, Matt? I think it was, wasn't it? But it was sort of side-footed without too much conviction from the man who came off the bench on Tuesday night. But it was a, a lot of space he found himself down there, despite the fact they've got a truly awful record at home in recent times. They haven't won in their last seven matches at home, but they're still right behind them as Dewsbury Hall, a taxi, edge of the penalty area, Dapper's offside, he puts the ball in the back of the net, but the flag on the far side had already gone up. I don't think he knew that. I'm not even sure that Michael Cooper, the Plymouth goalkeeper, knew that either. But again, encouraging signs in terms of the space that Leicester have found on a couple of occasions at the start of this game. They're getting exposed a little bit, and that, that was too easy from Plymouth's point of view. Excellent for Leicester. Dewsbury Hall playing it through. Dakar just needed to hold his run a little bit, but it was a little bit of a sighter for him. Um, it was a perfect position for him on the left-hand side. He can open up his body. And even though he's been in a bit of patchy form, he fancy him to tuck it away, but unfortunately offside. Here come the Foxes again, attacking on the left-hand side. Harry Winks it was who brought the ball forward, and pace has just slowed down a little bit, and Ricardo tries to quicken it. Edge of the penalty area, Ricardo's in here! Good save by the goalkeeper. Ricardo gets himself back on his feet. Fatawu, six-yard box, goes towards the back post. It's turned into the six-yard area and cleared away by Plymouth, but the Fox is coming really close there with a couple of half chances. Really good play, but Plymouth survived nil-nil. Yeah, well, they'd be disappointed. Dakar with the offside. Goal, OK, ruled out, rightly so, but then... Then getting into that situation, Ricardo breaking forward, good save by Cooper. Plymouth launch it long up towards Morgan Whitaker. Haven't mentioned his name too many times, which is good news from a, a Leicester point of view. He's been in unbelievable form this season, although not so much in recent matches. The goals have dried up a little bit. Mavadidi, left hand side, feeds it in, Dewsbury Hall. Mavadidi again, he's going for goal, and it wasn't too far wide. We were right behind that. He set it off outside the post to the right-hand side as he looked at the edge of the penalty area, but it just didn't swing enough back in. And the goalkeeper was diving and hoping, and Morgan Whitaker wins it back, and a quick ball forward looking for Hardy. Fars has this under control, a nice, stiff, firm back pass to Hermanson takes out the slight concern that there may have been there, and Hardy didn't even bother chasing it. The only danger there was a, a, a poorly hit back pass, but the Belgian international will be hoping to have a busy summer with his country at the Euros was accurate. Now, this is Mavadidi going to the penalty area, left-hand side, looking to pick someone out, but he just plays it against the defender, and it's uh, off the chest of Scar and behind for a corner to Leicester City. Uh, disappointing end to that move there, James Justin. Producing an unexpected ball from Plymouth's point of view, just dinking it over the top. Away from Bali Mumba to Dewsbury Hall. He's going to have a shot from the edge of the penalty area with that left foot that has scored so many goals this season and created so many assists. But now it's Plymouth on the counter-attack. Over on the far side. Bundu. Hardy goes towards the near post. And the shot will come in! And they've scored! It was a counter-attack! And Plymouth with their first real attack of the game, lead this game here at Home Park, Mustafa Bundu, one of five changes to freshen up Plymouth Argyle, has certainly done that, and so much against the run of play, the championship strugglers lead the league leaders by a goal to nil. Oh, football's just incredible, isn't it? No, it can turn against you. How careful you have to be, fine lines, small margins, and all those phrases. Leicester, you're looking to press, looking to capitalise and make the breakthrough. And then, as you said, Hardy's been totally isolated. All of a sudden, he's got a bit of support. And was it Bundu on the far side? Was it? Yeah, it was. He just picked the ball up. He's managed to join into the space. Ricardo's forward, he's caught out of position, so Fast needs to go around and cover. Doesn't get out there quick enough. Tewsbury Hall's gone over with uh, Steffi Mavadidi to offer the option of a short corner here. Left-hand side, but Mavadidi goes towards the near post and it's headed away by Plymouth Argyle, who have something to defend now. And that hasn't been the case in too many games 
in the last couple of months. James Justin. Yeah, just shows you, you never can tell, guy, can you? Can, you know, despite the, the tightness of the situation. Dewsbury Hall into the penalty area. Left hand side looking to pick out a teammate behind for a corner. Dewsbury Hall's not happy with the movements in front of him and his arms waving about Basil Fawlty like in real frustration, I think, with some teammates there. Big screen over on the far side showing Plymouth Argyle leading this game by a goal to nil. And well, Vestergaard's furious, he thinks it was a throw-in for his team and he switched off momentarily as Plymouth took the throw-in and thankfully there were teammates on hand to tidy up and Hermanson clears, but unconvincingly left-footed, it barely goes out of the penalty area. Leicester just a little bit ragged at the moment. They need to make sure that whatever happens, there isn't a second goal here. Bundu, and Bundu again, over it goes, edge of the penalty area. Sloppy passage of play from Leicester City. That's what people are doing, they're playing on moments, aren't they? <laughs> the odd ball into an area. They have great connections, Jews Nips, with uh, Liverpool football. As Leicester come forward with Dewsbury Hall towards the near post, there's half a shout for a handball as the defender got something on it, and it's through to the goalkeeper, Michael Cooper. Not real concerted shouts for a handball. Full short was the, uh, the man at the heart of that, but just a moment there, he winks. Short passes from Leicester City in their change kit as it's played in towards the penalty area it's a, a light orange or a, a peach depends on your preference but it's a, a light top against the dark green of Plymouth Argyle Pratt gets a touch there Leicester have won it back and they're building down this right hand side now with Fatawu three players in the penalty area on the edge of the penalty area movement from Dakar it's with Pratt down this right hand side uses the angle Fatawu's away into the penalty area into the six yard box and Dakar misses the best chance of the evening for Leicester City he went towards the near post the ball was excellent from Fatawu but the connection wasn't great from Dakar and he dragged it wide of the post and behind for a goal kick well, that's the best bit of play that Leicester produced all night Dennis Pratt involved heavily lovely reverse pass inside the fullback for Taru puts it across, yes, it's come to Dakar sharply, but I mean, he's unattended, front of goal, but in an excellent position, far too often really, but uh, yeah, when they do go forward, they look dangerous enough, don't they? Yeah, there's uh, certainly the whiff in the air that Leicester need to be careful, it's not one-way traffic as it's played forward to Mavadini, into the penalty area, left-hand side, the angle just got worse and worse, for him and in the end he dragged his shot so far wide it's gone out for a throw in yeah sounds worse than it is I suppose but initially yeah it looked as if he was going to be in perhaps not directly on goal but certainly towards goal it allowed the ball to bounce and it took him that little bit wider and all of a sudden it needed a ball across makes for a very intriguing watch if, albeit a nervous one Let's have the ball at the moment with Fatawu onto that left foot. This is Winks. Leicester with loads of bodies ahead of the ball. It's played into the area and an opportunity here for Mavadidi. Who's was Dakar, sorry, who's got his feet all wrong. There was no flag and he puts it wide and behind for a goal kick and that is the last piece of action for Pats and Dakar because his number comes up Mavadidi left hand side 20 yards inside the Plymouth half green shirts furrowing back most of them behind the ball at the moment as Mavadidi plays it infield to Winks Winks looking for an option and was nearly closed down there squeezed it to Ricardo, 10-yard pass and Fass is going forward into the penalty area and digs out a half-decent cross and Mavadidi with a shot at the goalkeeper but there was a, an opportunity there for him to 
possibly find one of the corners. He wasn't tightly marked. It was good play by Fars, venturing forward and digging out a cross. All over by the shout in to a degree, or certainly some it, people did. But, you know, he knew it was always going to be a little bit more complicated than that. But, but when you see all three teams struggling and, you know, they're, they're obviously giving their all, but it's just not working for them. Keeper's gone down and it's just got hold of it. Vardy it was who was charging through the centre, but it was brave goalkeeping by Michael Cooper. Just for a moment, Leicester were hoping that as he went down at the feet of Vardy, the ball might spill away from him and there might be a tap in, but it didn't. Vardy just about stayed onside. One last chance in them. We're into the final minute. Fatawu being pressed, playing the ball across the line over the halfway line. James Justin, Mavadidi on that left-hand side. Plenty of bodies in the penalty area and arriving at the back post was the man who you'd want to arrive at the back post, Jamie Vardy, but he just couldn't get contact with the ball and it's gone behind for a goal kick and that might just about be it I'm afraid to say from a Leicester point of view Vestergaard going over the halfway line this is it for Leicester it's Mavadidi coming in field Ricardo playing it out to the far side Shrewsbury Hall can he get the ball over he has to get it over he gets it into the penalty area and it's cleared away by Plymouth Argyle big roar from the crowd the referee not blown his whistle just yet Leicester have it still over on the far side whistles from the home supporters we're nearing full time surely Fatou he's lost the ball he's given away the free kick and that surely will be it now as Fatou shows his frustration Brendan Galloway it was he fouled and you feel now that Plymouth have metaphorically swum the channel. We are staying up, the home supporters are singing. But what will be happening to Leicester City come the end of the season after what is looking like a defeat now because the goalkeeper, Michael Cooper, is taking as long as he possibly can to deliver this free kick as long as he possibly can downfield. And there's the whistle. It's another seismic result in the championship this week. It's a huge disappointment for Leicester City. But all around me, the Plymouth fans jump with joy and on the pitch as well. While Leicester, one or two of them hit the floor in disappointment. It's a second successive defeat this week without scoring. They are still top of the table, but only just... The lead that was a chasm not so long ago is now wafer thin. The celebrations here are in stark contrast to the scenes away to my right where the Leicester fans are disconsolate. And Matt, you can't blame them. This is now becoming a real problem for Leicester to get over the line.